Hey gang, here's a little something different for the workshop channel. This past week I saw this pop up on Facebook Marketplace for really cheap. <laughs> Apparently the people just wanted it gone. This is a 2018 Trailmaster 150 XRX and it looks like it's hardly even been driven. Tires look practically new. Overall it's barely even dirty. And uh, I'll just say I got it cheap. So I'm hoping that I can get it running and have some fun with it. Uh, sorry about the sun, but anyway, I'm going to have to unload this thing. Now, I was in a hurry that day, so <laughs> I just drove my truck to the um, place where it was at. And they had some ramps, so we shoved it up on here and I brought it home. So... Now I gotta get it unloaded. You know, when I was a kid, we didn't have anything like this. I mean, it's got full suspension, disc brakes, forward and reverse, mirrors, lights, a horn, two horns, <laughs> overhead lights. I don't know if it has turn signals or not, but it's got what looks like could be turn signals. I don't see an indicator, but it may be on there. I don't know. A hitch? Come on! I never had anything like this when I was a kid. These are really cool. I know it's made in China. I understand that. But, still pretty cool. Even the steering column is height adjustable. And, you know, yeah, this might be the turn signal right here. Yep. Then it has a headlight switch, of course ignition, kill switch, speedo indicators all over on it. Looks like five point harnesses. And I can tell you this, I've sat in it. I'm 5'10", about 200 pounds, and there's clearance for my head and my feet. This is going to be pretty cool. I'm just hoping I can get it running without much effort. I know the battery has been disconnected. Who knows why. But I may need a new battery. And more than likely it's got carburetor issues of some sort. But there's still gas in the tank. Which doesn't look that bad. This is pretty cool. So I'm going to have to play with it. And see if I can't get it running. But... <laughs> I couldn't pass it up. I know. I, I've mentioned in my other channel, and I think I mentioned before, you know, I have a grandson, but, you know, he's six months old, so I can say it's for him, but <laughs> it may be a while till he can actually drive it. <laughs> now, as I said, you know, the, um, the carburetor has, seems to be an issue with these Trailmaster dune buggies. I've looked online and pretty much everybody says if your carburetor is bad, just buy a new one. And that's what I did. But I also bought a new air filter because I'll probably use that later. And there's also the fuel valve and it comes with a screen. So I bought one of those two. All of this was relatively inexpensive. I don't remember the exact cost. 
Um, I think yeah, this little uh, fuel tank switch is only nine dollars and forty one cents. I think the um, filter was probably not even ten dollars. And then I ordered a carburetor. Now the thing is, you could rebuild the carburetor. This one, I think this was about thirty bucks. Um, you could probably rebuild the carburetor. And initially, I looked at doing that. But the more I researched, the more everybody said, don't bother. Just replace the carburetor. So hopefully, this one is the exact same as what's on the dune buggy. So I'm going to get this open. And see what it, see what it looks like. Now what's interesting is these carburetors, oh yeah, that's, that looks just like it. Um, they come with what I, I think it's an electric choke, I don't know, um, I think it's how it works because there's an electrical connection and I don't think it's a fuel pump, but it might be. Um, let me, oh, you know what? I think that is I think that is a fuel pump. But anyway, comes with it attached. And really, you know, for 30 bucks, you can't beat it. You know, if you're going to have to tear down a carburetor and start digging into it to figure out what's wrong with it, you're probably further ahead just to buy one of these. You know, I hate to say that, but that's the truth. So, it's supposed to come with all the fittings and connections, and I'm going to see if I can't get this mounted doesn't look that hard. We'll find out. Now I wanted to show you something because I didn't realize this. I had no manual with this thing when I got it so I didn't know that to start this you can't just turn the key. It's not going to work. But if you push on the brake pedal it'll crank or it'll try to crank. Now you hear that? This thing will sputter and try to run but it won't. Okay, so what I have done previously, I had taken um, my hand and put it over the intake or the, where the um, air cleaner attaches while I was cranking it. So let's see if I can show you where that's at. Let me just start by saying I'm going to remove the air box. And I know these bolts aren't tight because I had it off previously. So I'm going to take these off. I think this one's a 12. No, that's probably a 10. I'm going to just take that out of the way. Set it aside. And there's another one down below. And it's just, it goes in sideways. So I'm going to pull that off. If I can. There it is. So there's the bolt and the nut. And then, to get the uh, air box off of the carburetor, I'm going to need a screwdriver. So let's see if I can show you where that is. Kind of hard. It's so tight in here. Um, it's really hard to get to everything. So there is where the uh, clamp is. I can get in here and show you. It's right here. Let me see if my hand is blocking that properly. It's at the end of the screwdriver. So I'm going to take that clamp loose. And it's going to want to turn on you. So you may have to get another hand in there to hold the clamp in place while you're turning it. And then down here is a little squeeze clamp that will release the tube off of the air box. So you do that, pull back, and the only other thing is there's a tube here, if I can show you that, this tube which draws out, um, it's, it's a vent from the crankcase for the uh, differential. 
So just know that that's where that goes. And there's also mine actually broke. There was a little breather hole on the bottom of this of this air box, and it was like a little just to let moisture out. And I was concerned that with that broken, it may not um, uh, be getting the right airflow. So I just plugged that one off. But I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Over here, if you can see, let me see if I can get to that. This is a cover, and I believe it takes a Phillips screwdriver to take it loose. Yep, pretty sure it's a Phillips. It is. But this cover covers up basically your electrical base. So you want to, you know, take out those screws, get that cover out of the way. And then there's a wire that comes in that connects to the carburetor. And that's this one right here. So you push in on this little hook looking deal and that unhooks it <coughs> and then you can slip this out you know back towards the carburetor. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I need to take loose um, the throttle cable and I'll show you that in just a minute. All right, what I plan to do, instead of unbolting this, uh, the throttle line or the steel tube that supports the cable, instead of unbolting that, I'm going to transfer the bracket. It should be the exact same from both carburetors. So I'm just going to take the screws out of that bracket. And that's going to allow me to swing around the cable. Hopefully you can see this good. Swing around and get to this cable and lift it up and then slide it out of the carburetor because it has this kind of a T on the end of it that fits in that hole right there. So I'm going to set that aside. Now I need to disconnect the... Uh, fuel lines and also this clamp that holds it to the intake manifold. Hopefully I can get, I can probably get a better shot of that in just a second. Now it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze, but this is the fuel hose right here. And it's not going to flow unless there's a vacuum on the system from what I understand because that uh, fuel valve in the tank which I'm not going to change yet. I'm going to just try to change the carburetor and see if that takes care of it. But it won't flow. So it might trickle a little bit of gas. And if I show you on the new carburetor, that's this line right here. I'm sorry, no, it's this line right here. Yeah. This is a, uh, a drain. And this is your fuel inlet. And so let me make sure I have, yeah. This is part of the vacuum system that makes the pump run. So let me get this hose off of the fuel filter and then we'll go from there. I'm going to set that aside. You can see it didn't even really, not much of anything come out of it. So get that out of the way. And then, because of the way this is designed, I think I'm just going to separate this line. Leave these two where they're at. Hopefully you can see this okay. I know it's, I can't see the camera. but um, And then I'll disconnect the clamp that holds the carburetor to the intake. And that should be it. Alright, this is focused on the clamp. I'm going to just kind of come in from up above and show you this is the clamp I need to take loose. So I know my hands are going to kind of be in the way. Um, but I'm going to take that loose. Let's 
see if that doesn't allow the carburetor to come out. Now you might have to twist it around a little bit to get it free. There it goes. I'm going to come out to this side. Okay, so that's kind of hanging up. That uh, drain tube, it's got a little um, holder on it. So I'm going to disconnect that. Slide that off, hopefully. There, that was the one I talked about on the bottom. So with that out of the way, that's it. So that's all it takes to get the carburetor out. And I'm going to set that aside. Since I had this, this is the, the drain tube that I was talking about right here. I'm going to pull that off. And I'll go ahead and attach that to the new carburetor. Make sure this wiring gets in there. So that tube's in place. Now I gotta kinda snake it in. That's the clamp for the air box. I'm gonna have to try to snake it into the intake manifold. And this is where it gets a little tricky because there's only so much room. You know, you start getting your arms in the way and your hands in the way and covers from the pump. Um, what's that? Where did that come from? We have to look in that, see what that tube was. Obviously it's, a, it's just a drain or overflow because it's got a cut angle on it. I don't see a port for that. Now that was just laying there. I don't know if it was something I knocked loose or if it was just a leftover piece or something, but let me get this in this intake manifold, or intake port, I should say. Yep. Looks like it's in there. I'm going to tighten that clamp. These other tubes here, that was this one that has a T fitting. So I'm just going to take it off the T. I know it's hard to see this, but let's see if I can angle that a little bit. Lots of pipes in the way, but this is that T fitting here that I showed uh, earlier on the carburetor, and I'm going to I'm using the T fitting that was on the dune buggy. Let me see if I can get a better angle here. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but anyway, this is that T fitting that I disconnected, and this is the T fitting for the new carburetor. I'm just going to take off the T and connect it to the existing T. Then, while I'm over here, uh, let me see, I need to have that out of the way. Uh, let's see, I need my fuel line. I need the fuel line. So I'm going to pull that off of the old carburetor. Put that, I can put it on. The filter and then connect it to the inlet. I know it's really hard to see this stuff, but I apologize for that. 
very small space I'm working in. There it goes. Okay, so the T-fitting's connected. The only other thing I need to connect, other than the cable itself, is this plug-in, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to feed that underneath the uh, bar here and plug that in. Hopefully, yep, plugged right in. Great. Okay, now I need to attach this throttle bracket. Looks like it's the same size. Yep. So I'm going to loop that uh, back, let's say. I know it's hard to see. And feed that into that inlet there, that little hole. Wrap the cable around. And then get these screws back in. Not so bad. <clears throat> now, the last thing I need to do besides looking it over making sure I'm not missing anything <laughs> is to put the air box back on now the only tricky part with the air box is getting the clamp to stay in place while putting it in you know again tight fit you gotta kind of be creative getting everything in and making it fit right. All right, so that's that slipped up on there good. Get that clamp in place. There we go. Make sure I have my angles right so I can get the bolts back in later. And then Another thing is reconnecting the snorkel tube, for lack of a better term, and that's just going to slip over the in inlet. All right, that's really all I want to do before I do a test. We're going to see if this is going to run. Now I haven't done anything other than put that carburetor on. It might take it a minute. We'll see what happens. It wants to run. excited now because this this was not a running dune buggy previously. Alright. Got lights?
Well, I might have to play around with it, make sure everything's working smoothly, but <laughs> all it took was that carburetor. I'm excited about that. Hope that was helpful. I'm going to take it for a ride and have some fun. <laughs> All right. I'm excited about that. You know, you never know what's going to work or not work. And sometimes you buy something hoping that it can be fixed pretty easily. Really, after me fighting with it for several hours, trying to get it to run, all it took was a $30 carburetor. Now, I'm going to keep the fuel control valve or whatever you want to call it. And also, I might change the air filter later. At this point, I just wanted to make sure it would run. And then I can worry about other things. Now, I did notice it's, it kind of lags you know, a little bit when you give it gas. Um, I don't know if that's normal or not. I've never had one of these, so I don't know how to compare it. So if you have one of these and you're familiar with them, let me know if that's normal or not, or if there's something that I need to adjust so that it takes off and drives better. But it went up and down the road fine. You know, it, it, like I said, it just felt a little sluggish hitting the gas. But other than that, I'm happy with it. So if you haven't already, I ask you to subscribe to the channel. Leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, all those cool things that help with the channel growth. I'm getting very close to having a thousand subscribers. And that was the goal with this channel, you know, to get it over a thousand. And currently I'm thinking I'm at like 940 or something like that. So thanks to you, this channel's growing. And I'm going to keep putting out stuff like this because, hey, it's fun. <laughs> uh, that's it for now. And until next time, take care of yourselves.